Hello, welcome to the Mechanical and Electrical Engineering Technology Department at Alfred State. My name is Dr. Lawrence, I'm a professor and department chair, and uh, today we're going to take a virtual tour of some classrooms and some labs that you will have classes and labs in when you're a student at Alfred State. So right now I'm in a classroom that uh, we teach lectures for all of uh, these different majors, and we'll pan around to see show you the, uh, the class size. Each lecture consists of uh, uh, two meetings per week in a room like this and then you'll have one extended lab period with the professor in one of the labs that we'll go check out now. So we do our lectures in a classroom and we do our labs in our dedicated laboratories which we'll take a little tour of right now. All majors in the Mechanical and Electrical Engineering Technology Department require laptops. Now, that said, you'll do a lot of work on your laptop, but we also still maintain this computer lab where a lot of uh, group work gets done. You can get together with classmates and uh, uh, use this uh, computer lab. These computers are outfitted with the software that you need to be successful in this department. Welcome to the machine shop. The machine shop is a lab that's used with our manufacturing processes class for all mechanical engineering technology students. For two hours a week, you'll be in here using this equipment. We have mills, we have lathes, and we've got many other pieces of equipment that you don't need any prior experience on before arriving at Alfred State. What makes a good engineer is someone that can communicate intelligently, use proper terminology on the equipment that's used in industry and the machinists that make the components that we design. The emphasis at Alfred State is on applied learning and using equipment like this gives you the opportunity to get some applied learning time with the professors that teach these classes. Welcome to the Materials Testing Lab. In this space, all freshmen, first semester freshmen, uh, have their lab in this classroom. You'll learn how to use the equipment in here, and this is the equipment used by engineers to determine uh, material properties of common building materials. We have hardness testers, tensile testers, we have impact testers, and behind this door in our heat treat lab, we can change the material properties by heat treating. And a typical lab in this class would be to take the material properties of a sample. We can then put the sample in one of our kilns heat treat that sample, and then see how that heat treatment has affected the material properties. These are fundamental uh, skills that engineers use when they're doing material selection for their designs. Welcome to the controls lab. In the mechanical and electrical engineering technology department, all majors will have classes that have a lab in, in this space. This space is currently under renovation. Uh, so it may look a little different now than when you get here. But I wanna point out what we do in this space. This space has uh, the systems that we use to control modern automated industrial systems, such as programmable logic controllers, which are outfitted on all of these individual trainers. A programmable logic controller is a good example of how we can use buttons, switches, and sensors to control outputs like electrical motors and lights. That's the building block behind industrial automation and control. This space that you'll see here, which is currently undergoing renovation, 
is going to house some of the most modern equipment that's used for industrial automation as part of our new mechatronics program. The mechatronics technology majors will offer students the ability to learn how to troubleshoot, analyze, and design the type of systems that maybe you've seen on how it's made on television uh, or some of these other programs that show you how we automate modern manufacturing processes. This is going to look very different when you get here. We have equipment on the way that will uh, allow us to teach students how this is done in industry. This lab is used by mechatronics technology students, computer engineering technology students, and electrical engineering technology students. We do a lot of different labs in here for different classes. Um, we recently acquired a, a grant to do some smart grid um, training. Smart grid is uh, kind of the next generation of the uh, power grid. Uh, so you can see the new trainers behind me. No electrical or computer engineering technology or mechatronics technology program would be complete without oscilloscopes and signal conditioning equipment like you see on all these workstations. It's very typical to have a lecture in a class uh, where we learn the theory behind this, but every class will have a lab component um, where we will come in and use equipment that's germane to the lecture material. So you'll see oscilloscopes and a lot of other equipment uh, in these individual workstations. And also, on the roof right above me, we have some alternative energy generation equipment. We have a small wind turbine, we have a solar collection uh, array, and these are some of the controls that allow us to see what's happening outside with our alternative energy generation equipment and monitor that to do labs related to that uh, topic in this space as well. This is our electrical fabrication lab. Electrical fabrication is where we build electrical circuits for computer, electrical, and mechatronics uh, students. So you'll see at these individual workstations, we have soldering stations, all with their own vent hoods. And students, when they are in a class like this, they have tool kits, and the tool kits have electrical components in them and we can build circuits uh, using this in this lab space. We also do printed circuit boards in this space. And I want to point out a very unique, well-equipped uh, clean room facility that we have. This facility is used to instruct students on uh, how we make integrated circuits, which are much smaller uh, circuit boards that are used in your smartphones, computers, and things like that. And we also teach mechanical engineering technology course in here called microfabrication, um, which is uh, where we introduce students to the concepts of uh, clean room use and uh, microelectronic machines or MEMS. Welcome to the Advanced Manufacturing Lab. All mechanical engineering technology students have two classes that use this space. One class covers traditional manufacturing methods, things like CNC machining. The other class talks about additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing does 3D modeling and 3D printing to create a product. Both of those processes involve an initial uh, writing and compiling of a program that's going to be used by these machines. After you have a program that's written and functioning properly, we can put that program on something like one of these 3D printers. The 3D printers that you see right here are currently creating respirator masks to help in the combat of the COVID-19 virus. So those are in use right now. On this side of the room, this is where the equipment is for CNC machining. 
So again, you write the, the computer program uh, in the, with tool paths to create uh, something using these CNC machines. The CNC machines read the program and they have different tooling and cutters inside that will cut that shape out of a block of steel to create uh, whatever you've designed. So both of these, uh, both of these processes are uh, in the Mechanical Engineering Technology Program. One thing we like to do in this department is we like to compete. We have uh, some examples here in this area where we have student groups that design, build, test, and compete with uh, equipment in national competitions. You've probably heard of the SAE, Society for Automotive Engineering, uh, Baja competition. This is the type of machine that students design and build to compete in that. It's currently our most active group in the department and we've got students from all programs all across campus uh, that help in this endeavor. Similarly, but different, is our basic utility vehicle. Now this one hasn't been uh, pulled out, so I hope you can see it somewhat. This is an off-road vehicle competition uh, where students design an off-road vehicle that can be used uh, or is intended to be used in a developing country to uh, serve some need in that developing country. We've competed in the BUV competition, basic utility vehicle competition for years. We have a great track record with many national championships. Uh, students design everything outside of the engine and the transmission. That's the only thing that's provided um, by the competition coordinators. Everything else, the bed, the frame, uh, and whatever else has to be done to uh, achieve the goal of that year's competition is designed and implemented by students. This whole space, in fact, is a senior project lab. As part of your uh, experience here in any of our four-year programs, you'll be asked as a senior to work with some other students to design, manufacture, test, and report on uh, something that you create with your classmates. So this space is staffed by some of our technical staff, and you'll see equipment that's spread around here that's uh, free for you to use and you'll get trained on. And uh, this is something that's a capstone or culminating event for any of our four-year programs. Welcome to the Controls and Hydraulics Lab. For mechanical engineering technology students, this space is used to uh, do a senior level class where you can get certified in uh, hydraulic, uh, as a hydraulic specialist with the International Fluid Power Society. Also in this lab, we teach freshmen some control system uh, technology. So whether you're electrical, computer, mechatronics or mechanical, you're going to get some time on a trainer like this and then we'll move to a trainer like this. This teaches the fundamentals of how electrical circuits work using relays, inputs and outputs. And this is a smaller trainer that we use to teach students how to use, program, uh, troubleshoot a programmable logic controller. We have new PLC controllers that you'll see in other portions of this lab, but we still use these so students have the experience on a couple different manufacturers. Students love to get in lab and get their hands on some of this equipment. Uh, and anytime we have labs in class, we have labs in all of our classes, the lab grade is generally um, what students really excel in and they enjoy spending time in lab and working with their professors to learn this technology. This is our heating, ventilation, and air conditioning lab. Mechanical engineering technology students have a course in their fourth semester where they learn about these systems. 
And you can see behind me that we have air handling units, rooftop units, and some ductwork that's common to keep buildings cool and warm, depending on the needs of the building. One thing you have to understand when you talk about heating, ventilation, and air conditioning are the systems that tell them when to turn on, when to turn off, when things are too hot, too cold. That's why the lab for this particular class includes uh, experience with some of the components you see on this table. This semester, in this class, students had to build, program, and test a example uh, or a simulation of the type of system you have in your home to keep your, your home or apartment warm, dry, and comfortable. So this includes heaters, coolers, sensors, and controllers. No experience is necessary with equipment like this when you arrive at Alfred State. Our professors will teach you how to use all these individual components and how to get them talking to each other to make a working system like the type of systems you'll encounter upon graduation.